Master from your science semester 2 chapter 1 adaptations in animals. So before going, before beginning with the chapter, with the lesson, let us first understand what adaptation means. Okay, so before that, let me just ask you a question. Have you ever heard of a dinosaur? Yes, we have, right? But again, have you ever seen a dinosaur nowadays? No, right? Because uh, thousands of years ago, due to the sudden changes in the Earth's atmosphere or the Earth's surface, the dinosaur, they could not adapt to the situation. They could not adapt to the sudden changes that occurred. Okay? That is the reason they got extinct. Because of which we could not find dinosaur nowadays. Had they, had they adapted to that situation or to that uh, changes back then, we could have seen it still today. Okay? So, adaptation, it basically means um, having to get, uh, to get use of the changes or the or we can adjust to the changes okay so moving on let's learn about habitat so we know that um, there are many animals that live in different regions of the earth all right so uh, there are animals who live in the highest mountain there are animals who live in the deepest ocean right there are animals who live in a warm climate there are animals who live in a very cold regions all right so how are they uh, how are they able to survive in that situation because they are adapted to the surroundings of the environment. Okay, so habitat, it, uh, it generally means the surroundings or the habitat in which an animal or a plant lives or they survive. Okay, so adaptation here, it basically means to adapt or to adjust to the new changes or the needs of the new changes that occur okay, in order to survive. Let's uh, learn how animals living in different habitats are adapted to the conditions there. Okay, so first we have terrestrial animals, then aquatic animals, then amphibians, and arboreal animals, and then plus aerial animals. Okay, the first one, terrestrial animals. Alright, terrestrial animals are animals that are those animals that live on land. For example, we have animals like elephants, horses, and then cows, snakes, bears, etc. Okay, so those animals, they are animals who live on land. Because they are bodies that are suited to living on land. They have to, animals living on land have different features. Alright, for, for number one, they have, they have lungs, right, they, which helps them to breathe on land. Okay, and then number two, they have legs. Okay, just like uh, human beings, they, they also they have legs. They have four legs which helps them to run or uh, to move around to get food and then protect themselves when any enemies or any uh, intruders come, right? And then, uh, but there are some exceptions. Like for example, we have snake. They doesn't have legs, but still they survive on land. Why? Because they have scales that helps them to move around. Even though they doesn't have legs, they have scales that helps them to move around uh, in terms of getting food or. Uh, protecting themselves from animals. All right. Number three, they have teeth and claws in order to have food or to catch their to catch its prey for survival. Okay. And number four, they have their sense organs which helps them to look for food, shelter, and uh, in order to protect themselves from the enemies. Okay. And uh, but then in uh, there are some animals which lives in. Um, the coldest region on, on, on the earth, right? Those animals are the polar bears. Right? But then again, in the icy polar regions, the animals they have to face a really harsh and cold conditions, especially during the winter, right? So in order to protect themselves from those harsh and cold conditions, they uh, have thick thick coat of fur, right? They have thick coat of fur, and also and they also have fat stored inside their in their there are also penguins who live in the cold regions, right? And sometimes they huddle, to, they huddle themselves to keep them warm. Huddle, which means uh, to get close or to stick close to each other. Okay. And then next, uh, we have we are going to learn about the animals that live in the desert. Deserts they are very hot during the uh, day, and then it becomes cold at night. Because of which, the animals such as uh, camels, they have very thick skins which protects them from the hot sun as well as from the cold. Alright, and also they have uh, lots of fats stored in their hump, alright, which they later on they use it. 
and these regions because they, they get uh, very less water so they use those uh, fats that they have stored in their home they use those fats and um, can survive for many or several days without water and food there are some places where uh, it is very hot in during the summer and then very cold during the winter so in those places the animals living in those places such as uh, snakes and then lizards and rats they, they eat as much as they can during the summer season and during this uh, during the winter they sleep in their caves and burrows and then they use up the extra fats that are stored in their body and so this process of sleeping uh, for a long period of time is called hibernation next uh, the aquatic animals okay the aquatic animals are those animals which live in water inside the water okay uh, for example we have fish and then crabs dolphins whales etc all right so uh, the feel the fish they breathe inside the water with the help of their gills okay but then again there are animals such as uh, dolphins and whales who doesn't have gills they have lungs all right so in order to breathe in order to survive okay in order to breathe they have to come up to the surface of the water and then uh, take a deep breath and then dive in, in the water again and uh, they can they can stay in one breath for around uh, four to four for around four to five minutes which they have fins in order to swim in the water the turtles they have paddled like feet and the ducks they have webbed feet in order to swim in the water okay which helps them to swim in water okay next next we have amphibians so amphibians are those animals which live both on land as well as in water all right for example we have animals like frogs toads newts and then salamanders all right so these animals they live both on land and in water okay uh, in on land they breathe with the help of their lungs and on and in water they breathe with the help of their skin all right and uh, they have legs which with the help of which they can move both on land and swim in water all right next we have the arboreal animals so arboreal animals are those animals which live on trees all right for example we have monkeys and then squirrels etc okay so these kind of animals they live only on trees so they, they move from one tree to another in order to uh, survive so these kinds of animals they, they spend most of their time on trees right uh, like monkeys if we take monkeys monkeys they have very uh, strong and muscular tails which helps them to swing from one tree to another right and then uh, for squirrels and uh, lizards they have a very they have very strong clothes which help them to climb the trees okay and then we have they, they also have spines and plates which helps them to um, grip which help, helps them to hold a grip on the tree so that it doesn't fall down all right so next we have the aerial animals all right so aerial animals uh, are those animals which spend most of the time in the air for example we have birds and pets Okay. Next we have aerial animals. So aerial animals are those animals which spend most of their time in the air. For example, we have bats and birds. Right? Uh, bats and birds instead of their uh, front leg, they have wings. Right? They have feather, they have wings which helps them to fly. And also their body shape is um, structured in such a way that uh, they have a very hollow bones and then they have feathers and then uh, they have a very light weight they are very light weighted which helps them to fly and also there are some birds which live, who lives in a very cold region okay uh, like that of uh, siberia in russia right so because their region is very cold they, they, they live there during the summer but then they move to another place during the winter okay they move to another place in search of food and better living conditions Okay, so this process of living, this process of leaving their home aside and then moving to another place in search of better living condition, in search of better food, is known as migration. So, adaptation for food. Okay, as we all know that animals, some of the animals have flesh, some of the animals have plants, and then there are animals with both the plants and the flesh. So. Animals are being divided into the following categories under their 
food habit. Okay? Uh, then you have herbivorous, carnivores, omnivores, and parasites. Okay, so those are the first one, herbivores. Herbivorous animals are those animals who eat only plants. For example, we have cow, goat, and deer, etc. Okay, so these kind of animals, they have a sharp front teeth with the help of which they cut their um, leaves. They cut the leaves of the trees, okay, or their grass. Alright, and they have a very flat grinding teeth with, with the help of which they chew the their food. Okay, and then um, there are also some animals like elephants and uh, giraffe. So giraffe with the help of their long necks and then uh, elephants they have their long trunk. So with the help of those uh, features, they reach through, they reach the grass or the leaves of the trees. Okay. So the next one, carnivores. So the animals who eat flesh are known as carnivores. Okay. So for example, we have uh, animals like lions and then tigers and then wolves. Okay, so uh, they have a very sh strong, sharp teeth with the help of which they used to tear the, tear the flesh of other animals. Okay, and also we have animals such as snakes who are carnivores, but then uh, the snake they doesn't have the right kind of teeth with the help of which they will chew the, their food. So because of that, because of that reason, they used to swallow, their, uh, swallow the food as a whole. Okay, and uh, we also have uh, birds who are carnivores like uh, eagles and vultures so they have a very uh, sharp beak okay they have a very sharp beak and uh, a very sharp claws with the help of which they, they used to uh, catch their prey and then tear the flesh of their prey all right next uh, we have omnivores so omnivores and uh, omnivores are those animals who eat both plants and um, animals Okay, we bought the plants and the flesh of the animals. And uh, human beings, human beings are also uh, omnivores. And we have uh, other animals such as bears and crows are also omnivores animals. Okay, so that, the last one, parasites. So parasites are those animals that feed on uh, both the plants and animals right, for their living. Okay, uh, like for example we have uh, mosquitoes, lice and fleas and leech etc. Okay. So these animals, uh, because they don't have a uh, um, teeth, because they don't have teeth, they have a tube-like structure with the help of which they suck the blood of other animals. Next, adaptation for hunting and protection. So here we are going to learn how the, the animals they try to protect themselves from the predators. Okay. So there are the there are some hunter animals. Right? The hunter animals, they uh, have the adaptation of catching their prey while the prey animals, they have their uh, adaptation of escaping or uh, defending themselves from the hunters. Okay? So many of the animals, they try to escape or defend themselves from the hunters, from the hunters or the other animals by running away. Okay? And uh, some of the animals, and also there are many animals uh, who uh, try to merge with the surroundings. Right, uh, which makes it difficult to spot the animals. Okay, this act of merging with the surroundings is called camouflage. Under this, we have animals such as stick insects. Okay, which uh, which is similar to a stick or a twig. Okay, and then we have uh, chameleons, which are which are there in uh, various in a range of colors, and also they have the ability to change color because of which it is difficult to spot that animal. Okay, and then we have polar bears, which is a uh, which because of its white fur, it is difficult to spot the, that animal in the snow. Alright, and uh, we have um, zebras and tigers because they have stripes in their bodies, because of which they are not visible enough, or we are it is difficult to spot them uh, when they are um, between the grasses or trees or in the forest. Okay, now so. Uh, there, are some, there are also some animals who have spines and uh, shells, okay, in order to protect themselves. Okay, so um, let's take some examples. We have uh, porcupines and hedgehogs. Okay, so porcupines they have porcupines and hedgehogs. They have uh, spines in order to protect themselves. For example, uh, when any when any danger come come towards the hedgehogs, they roll their body and then uh, it becomes difficult for the predators to attack them. Okay, 
and uh, next we have tortoises and uh, snails. Okay, tortoises and snails they have shells which protect them. All right. Next uh, we have uh, rhinoceros and uh, buffaloes also. These animals they have a horn. All right, they have horns with which they try to protect themselves. Okay. Next we have uh, snakes and opossums. These animals, uh, they act like a dead animal whenever any uh, dangers come towards them. Okay? They act like a dead animal in order to protect them so that the enemies do not uh, attack them and then they leave them. Okay. So again, we have uh, animals such as globefish. Okay? So this globefish, uh, when any danger, when it senses any dangers, it, it blows in itself up twice its size. Okay? Which... Um, scares the enemies or the predators and so they do not attack or they do not go, uh, go near to it. Okay. And lastly we have a uh, flying fish. Okay. This flying fish whenever any danger, whenever it senses any danger and so the flying fish it jumps out of the water and it glides by um, spreading its fins. Okay. In this manner it, um, it escapes from the predators. Alright, so these are the uh, various adaptations or for protection which the um, animals they adapt in order to protect themselves from their enemies or their predators. And so in today's class we have learned uh, the, the adaptation of animals to their habitats, the adaptation for food, adaptation for hunting and uh, protecting themselves from the enemies. Alright, so I hope every one of you, you have learned it or understood it clearly and um, just try to read the books, alright, just try to read the text at home so that you get a better understanding of it, okay? Stay home, stay safe, do for self, do for family, do for India, and the change of COVID-19, from Google, Kamiya, day.